Hi everybody. Um, well, it's going to be a busy day, exciting day. Welcome to the BeatScad Conference 2023. Um, I'm Bex Breslin and I'm BeatScad co-founder and trustee chair. I'm really happy to welcome you all here. This is our first in-person conference since 2018, so we've been like really raring to go to get back here. We did a couple of online events in the interim period, but it just doesn't beat having everybody here. Um, so let's, uh, let's crack on. So uh, it's our first time here at uh, the College Court venue here in Leicester. So the agenda was included in the delegate pack. So hopefully you all had a chance to have a look at the topics that we've got. The running order of the day, we've got some really great guest speakers coming up today. But what I do want to do is just start with a celebration of SCAD patients. Um, I'd like to invite Karen Rockle up to join me. So Karen's my fellow co-founder and, and former trustee. Hi, Karen. <laughs> Thanks, Mick. Hello, everybody. And it's really lovely to see so many of you here, all these smiling faces. And uh, we're going to do a little exercise. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to do anything too terrible. But uh, what I'd like to do is, everybody who is a SCAD, I would like you to stand up, please. Wow. <laughs> OK. So that's lovely. You can look around, see who, who each other is so that you can chat it later on. And it's really amazing that two thirds of our audience today had their SCAD in the last three years and that's completely blown me away. And um, our, the SCAD that is uh, our veteran, if you like, Catherine, had her SCAD in 1999. So that just shows you that uh, SCAD's been around for a very long time. Most of the people back then were, were misdiagnosed probably, and, but Catherine is the one that's been here the longest. So uh, I can't even see her, but she can sit down. <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> so Catherine's going to sit down now. <laughs> no, not everybody else. Stand up, stand up. Stand up. <laughs> she gets privileges. You don't get away with it that easily. <laughs> So now, this is a celebration of SCAD, and I'm blown away by how many of you had your SCAD this year. So those who had their SCAD in 2023, uh, do sit down. You can sit down. Everybody else stay standing. Okay. So now, those that had their SCAD in 2022, I'd like you to stand, sit down. Thank you. See how we're disappearing now? So those that had their SCAD in 2021, sit down. Those who had their SCAD in 2020. Those who had their SCAD in 2019. Those who had their SCAD in 2018. Those who had their SCAD in 2017. 2016. 2015. 2014. <laughs> the wonderful Harriet. <laughs> 2013, 2012, <laughs> the wonderful Beth, 2011, the wonderful Debbie. So then, here we have our veterans. I'm going to call us veterans. We're, we're the, because uh, I haven't stood, I haven't sat down yet, just by the way. Um, we're the ones that are still standing. We've been here for a long time. We're a demonstration that there is life after SCAD. And so I won't uh, go through all the, 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 da the dates now. So 2000, where do we go to? 2011, 10, that's me. I'm sitting down now. Uh, 2009, 2008, 2007, <laughs> 2006. It's a competition now. <laughs> 2005. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So that just, sh that just shows you that there is longevity and, and there is hope. And the rest of today is going to show you just how, how, how much we've achieved just since we started learning about SCAD, which was like when I had mine in 2010, nobody had a clue. And I, I wasn't diagnosed for three months. So, you know, things have changed and you're going to hear all about that now. Thank thanks. you, Karen. And thanks, everybody, for participating. Okay, so Beat SCAD, um, now we are eight. So yeah, we launched the charity at the first conference in November 2015. And this is our fourth conference. 
So the Beat SCAD vision is a, a world that understands SCAD, where those affected are quickly and accurately diagnosed and importantly, never feel alone. And we work to that vision with a threefold mission to raise awareness of SCAD, to provide support to people affected by SCAD and to fundraise and promote research. So we are currently a team of three trustees. Pictures look massive on that slide, so I'll go over it quickly. <laughs> but Debbie Oliver is fellow co-founder, and Sarah Coombs joined the team in 2018 after volunteering with us for a couple of years. And I'm sure many of you know Debbie and Sarah as being the super-duper admins of the Facebook support group. So we're all SCAD patients, as you've just seen. Um, we're all volunteers, so currently BeatScad has no paid employees. Everything is done voluntarily. Um, many of you here today have also helped working on the SCAD mission so far. So the charity is making an impact, a significant impact really, in the short time we've been established, and, and the reason for that is all of you. BeatScad is a charity created by patients for patients, and you know, it's you as the BeatScad community who are achieving what we are achieving. So our theme today was chosen because we're celebrating 10 years of research here in the UK led by Dr. David Adlam and the team in Leicester. So a bit of a throwback picture here to August 2013 when a small group of patients, small in comparison to today, but we felt like an enormous group back then, we headed into Leicester and met with Dr. Adlam to talk about the needs of the community and what we wanted from the research. So at that time, Dr. Adlam had received some initial funding from the Leicester Biomedical Research Centre and the technology team had been setting up a web portal that would be used to start registering patients interested in the research. He'd also reached out to Dr. Sharon Hayes at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, USA. So the Mayo Clinic had established a SCAD registry a couple of years prior to this. And just at the end of that picture is Dr. Rajiv Gulati, who's an interventional cardiologist at the Mayo Clinic. And he came over for that meeting, and it was a really significant milestone, really, in getting the research going, understanding what the patients wanted from the research, and starts of really important international collaboration, which we've seen develop over the last decade. So very much the seed being sown here. Now, this is the uh, strategic plan. Uh, this was devised in 2020. The trustees looked at particular plans and objectives that fall under our three mission areas. It's available on our website, so I'm not going to trawl through it today, but I just included it because I'd like to acknowledge some of the many contributions that the BeatScad community have already done to help BeatScad work on these plans and objectives. So under the awareness umbrella, patients have helped with uh, a podcast. So this was created in conjunction with charity Medics for Rare Diseases. Uh, these are a wonderful charity who are working to make rare diseases more known amongst uh, doctors in training, uh, junior doctors. So this was a really important podcast for patients to share their testimonies um, and help with the training of the, the next generation of doctors. We've also had a group of PSCAD patients, so pregnancy-related SCAD. This is a really important subgroup, and we've created some educational videos, again, all directed at training healthcare professionals, and nothing beats the patient's story in, in emphasising how important it is um, to know about this condition. Now, under the support mission area, one of our objectives is campaigning for SCAD clinics. Uh, now, I'm sure many of you know that we have a wonderful SCAD clinic here in Leicester run by Dr. David Adlam, but obviously the community has grown and grown and grown and demand is through the roof um, and one man cannot sustain the SCAD population. Um, <laughs> so you do a great job, but you know, it's a lot, it's a lot. <laughs> So patients came to a meeting with the trustees. Um, it was a, called a SCAD, SCAD management showcase. So we came in to talk about the importance of the clinic and why it's really important that we have more of them around the country. Now, obviously the research umbrella part of our mission includes huge amounts of fundraising. And once again, we've been overwhelmed by the fundraising efforts of the community. There's really just a few examples crammed into this slide. There's so many people doing lots of amazing challenges. You can keep up to date with that on our social media channels. You know, if you do an event, let us know. We'll share your, share your page. 
uh, lots of walking, swimming. Uh, we've even had the squat challenge in, in this one. So there's obviously some strong legs out there in the community that are working really hard to raise lots of money. And in terms of the financial summary, so our, our financial year ends on the 30th of September. So our year eight figures will be published, you know, once we've had that all go through the accountant. So this is for seven years. And the total gross income is £397,660, which uh, averages out at about £56,800 per year, which is unbelievable, really, considering we are a very small community. Um, and our support really does come from people that are affected by SCAD. You know, we're, we're not a big hitter in the charity field. So, you know, this is really impressive. And I think you should all be very, very proud of, of, of what's been achieved. Total expenditure on there is 262,270. There are more funds in there that are reserved for the research, so it's just that they haven't, haven't been paid out yet, but there's more that's uh, actually been awarded to, to the research. So, so this is a recap of the donations that have been awarded to the University of Leicester so far. And our most recent award was uh, last year for 106,000 pounds for a new clinical research fellow. And this was going to be for a two-year appointment starting August 2022. Um, unfortunately, there were a few challenges and hurdles, including the ever-looming COVID, unfortunately. So this impacted the, the start and, and that had to be delayed. However, the trustees met with Dr. Adlam to uh, discuss how to move forward with this. Um, and given the delay, we've obviously done some more fundraising in that time. So I'm really happy to announce that uh, we have increased the award, which now means that the Clinical Research Fellow is for a three-year PhD appointment. And this is really important for the SCAD study. You know, this gives us three years of stability. Um, and we've already seen, you know, lots of work coming out from the previous two research fellows. So we had Dr. Abi Al Husseini to start with, who was funded by the British Heart Foundation, followed by Dr. Alice Wood, who was partially funded by Beat SCAD. So great achievement and I'm pleased to say that the appointment is filled so we can introduce our new clinical research fellow Dr Andrew John who has very kindly joined us here today even though she will start uh, 1st of February so thank you very much for joining and welcome to the team. So as I said you know we're seeing efforts coming out from the research we've seen lots of research publications uh, we do keep a list of those on the BeatScad website. But, you know, this is how we are seeing your funds in action. You know, we are seeing the results coming out. This is your data that the team are using that's included in these papers, you know, and the reason that's happened is because of your fundraising. So we do have a fundraising campaign at the moment. So we're looking to raise £25,000 to support the Clinical Research Fellow. Uh, it's a Just Giving page. Some people have already done some events, you know, and linked their pages back into it. So thank you to everyone who's contributed to that so far. Uh, and I just want to touch on some of the ongoing projects. So trustees and volunteers, we have been working quite a long-term project, a well-being project. So we already have resources on our website and we've had patients who have helped with things like an online event, general well-being videos that we have on our, on our YouTube channel. And we currently have a group of patients who have been brainstorming about how we can improve and expand on the resources that we, we have available. So any ideas, if anyone wants to be involved in that, you know, obviously let us know. And next is the website redesign. So our website is a really, really important tool for our mission. So this year, the trustees decided to invest some funds to redesign. And we've been working with an external consultant for the last few months really, really interesting development process. And we're looking at just improving the whole website experience, really changing some of the content, the layout, the navigation, making sure we're directing the right information to our audience, whether they're patients or healthcare professionals. So we're not quite ready to relaunch yet, but um, you know, keep an eye out in our newsletters, et cetera, to, um, to see news of that. And an important part of that redesign is customer relationship management integration. So at the moment, some of our admin in relation to the newsletter, in relation to the keep in touch form that some of you will have filled in, they're sort of separate and it creates a lot of work for Debbie in particular. Um, we look into streamline this and make it more efficient and relieve some of that effort from, from Debbie. Uh, and then a couple more items are the buddy service. And then we also do training for healthcare professionals. So 
Uh, a lot of work with paramedics, cardiac rehab teams, they are two of our really, really key audiences for training. Sarah and Karen have both participated in quite a lot of training sessions, whether they're in person or remote. And again, patients have joined this and you know, sharing stories to help with delivering that training. And then in terms of future aims, so we have a wish list and two of those really important items are increasing regular donations and increasing volunteers. So having a known income basically helps us plan better. So the future projects, you know, how we can help with the research, it all helps if we have a better idea, um, you know, from regular donations. And obviously taxpayers among us, where we can claim gift aid, that's a very, very welcome boost um, to add on to those donations. So we have a few ways uh, where people can donate. We now use CAF Donate platforms. So CAF Bank is the charity bank and uh, they have a platform to support us for managing funds. And so that now allows us to have direct debit set up. Previously, we only had the standing order. So that form is, is still available, but we have other options on our website if anybody's interested to take a look. Now, increasing volunteers. So BeatScad trustees and volunteers you know, fantastic teamwork, but there's a lot to do. Um, there's only so many hours in the day, and as I said, you know, we are all doing it in our spare time. So we would really, really love to have some more support. And these are just a few areas that we're particularly looking for help. Certain roles, certain skill sets, they're not directed at a single person. You know, most of the BeatScad projects are shared. So, you know, sort of fundraising team, but anybody that has experience in these sort of areas that could help us to create and implement targeted strategies, um, analytical people and marketing people, you know, we need you. Um, <laughs> we definitely need to kind of look at our metrics. We need to look at what we're, what's going well, where are we wasting our time? You know, where can we grow? Where can we improve? So. Any help, you know, please do talk to us today or you can contact us. We've got the contact us email. Uh, it's a lovely quote. It's very, very accurate. Well, I don't know where Sarah and Debbie in particular find the time for all the things they do. They are two very, very amazing people. But I do just want to mention a research opportunity. So uh, Marissa Plaza is a PhD student at Edge Hill University in Lancashire. And she's got a background in physiotherapy. So cardiac rehab is sort of an important area that she's looking at. So she actually wants to recruit SCAD patients who have been diagnosed in the last three months. So recent events uh, and looking at the lived experience of, of SCAD patients and, and what the need is in terms of cardiac rehab. And then also looking at healthcare professionals, sort of what do healthcare professionals already know about SCAD? Where are their unmet training needs? So Marissa's here today <laughs> and she's brought some um, promotional collateral as well. So again, if, if you're interested in either aspect of that research, you know, feel free to talk to Marissa. So thank you very much.